Hey Guru Nation, welcome back to the clinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, follow me everywhere. This video today, for those that don't know how this works, you send me a question via email or text or uh, any social network. I'll get back to everybody, right? If I forget, email me again or, or message me again or whatever you did. Do it again. Sometimes I do miss them. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to all of you, but sometimes I'll do a video if I think it's good, if it's a good question, and if I think others might get some value out of it, or if I'm sensing some common themes. So one that's actually really interesting, and there really is no right or wrong answer. I mean, they have these conversations at conferences, and depending on who you ask, if you ask 20 people, you're going to get 20 different answers. But in our industry, it's always wise to err on the side of caution. So this one's all about IRBs and patient recruitment. Okay, so one of my sites recently had a question, had a valid question for their IRB. And so they said, if we run an advertisement on a Craigslist that is not advertising a particular trial, but it's advertising our site. So our site is located in San Bernardino. We conduct studies for Alzheimer's, for schizophrenia, for pain, for restless leg syndrome, for asthma, for constipation, right? Very generic, right? These are what these are the studies that we specialize in. Uh, please email or call if interested. Okay, generic. First of all, the question is, do we need IRB approval to run this particular post, right? And the answer is, depending on who you ask, uh, to some people with a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So we actually asked the IRB for one of those studies. So you know how I just listed six? And I didn't list six studies, I listed six indications. So for one of those indications, there's a, a study we're doing. We asked the IRB for that particular study. And again, the person with the hammer, everything looks like a nail. The IRB said, and I'll read it to you, because this could be, I mean, you do what you want, you follow. I prefer to err on the side of caution, so our sites now are going to be doing this. Um, and there is, there is a caveat here. So the IRB responds, if an ad is going to be used for recruitment purposes, it needs to be submitted for review. If you do not want to submit the ad on behalf of a specific study, you can submit the ad as a generic item. The item can be reviewed as a generic standalone item. So for most sites, we don't care because the sponsor pays for the IRB fees. Right, so if we're going to run an ad for, let's say we have a schizophrenia study, and we actually, in this case, are going to want IRB approval because it is going to be study specific, we run it through the IRB, in this case the central IRB, and the sponsor has already made arrangements with the IRB that they're going to pay for any submissions from, from their sites. Well, the question then becomes, who pays for these submissions if they're generic submissions? Because... Yeah, sometimes you'll get lucky and maybe the sponsor will pay, will reimburse the site for the IRB fee, but sometimes they won't and they shouldn't. I mean, why? You're, you're sending out a generic advertisement. It's not really going to be benefiting the sponsor, although it might if it generates patients for their study, but they're also helping their competitors possibly get studies in their studies or get patients in their studies. So... There's many different ways to go about it. Of course, if you ask an IRB representative, they're going to tell you, yes, you have to submit it to the IRB. Okay, again, someone who has a hammer tends to look at everything as a nail. Um, you should ask an attorney, all right? Darshan Kulkarni would be a good one. Uh, but again, if you ask 20 people, you're going to get 20 different responses. Normally, I would say, just run it to be safe, but I have done this in the past, and I sometimes have gotten lucky, and sponsors have reimbursed me, and other times they haven't, okay? And then you could try to get the all the sponsors to reimburse you for the one submission, knowing that if you have six sponsors, two might say yes and four might say no, so you'll at least get it reimbursed, but you got to ask yourself, is that really... 
is that really the right move for you to do like from a business perspective because if the sponsor finds out I mean they're probably going to end up paying it but I'm sure it will leave a bad taste in their mouth if they know that they're helping you advertise for other studies that are not theirs why would they pay for that now they probably won't notice they probably could care less they're probably happy that you're going through the extra steps of getting IRB approval but if I were a sponsor I wouldn't feel good about it and I don't know if I would approve it I would tell the site to run a study specific ad and then I will approve it so I'm telling you this because the IRBs can charge you for generic items all right and if you send an IRB a generic item one of my sites one time, this was back in 2009, we uh, were told by a consultant to, which was a bad idea, to get an IRB approved pre-screening consent just to be safe. The consultant said, should you get audited by the FDA, you want to show them that you have IRB approved pre-screening forms. Well, that's all fine and dandy until you start submitting, and remember, I was a startup, when you start submitting these things to IRBs and you're not getting approval from anyone, right? You're not getting reimbursed from anyone. You're get, you're, you, the site, has to pay the bill for these submissions at this point. And they can get pretty costly. I mean, we're talking about $800 to $1,200 every quarter, right? So these things have to renew. And sometimes they renew once a year. But it's an expense that a site may not necessarily want to pay especially when they're a startup site. So I would say err on the side of caution, seek legal advice, submit it if you have to, try to get it reimbursed if you have to, uh, be honest with the sponsor, say, hey, I'm submitting generic ad for all these studies for our site, will you reimburse us? And so if you're honest with the sponsor and they tell you it's okay, then do it. If not, you may have to change your strategy and just get six separate submissions or seven separate submissions depending on how many studies you have uh, in order to get each particular one approved rather than just getting a generic one approved if money really is an issue. If money is not an issue, the answer is obvious. Just err on the side of caution, pay the fee, try to get it reimbursed somehow. Hopefully this helps, right? But again, don't take what I say as like set in stone advice, okay, this is just, I'm reporting as I'm learning to you, and if you ask like 50 people, you can get 50 different responses, right? But err on the side of caution, just to be safe, just wanted to throw that out there. I forgot to add, I just want to throw in there another interesting thing to think about, and really no one has the answer for, and this is why we have thought leaders speaking at conferences and sharing ideas. Um, as I'm building my own patient recruitment firm, so I'm building a CRO, I have sites, I'm building a CRO, I'm also building a patient recruitment company, and we do a lot of content marketing, and the line is going to be very blurred between what is an ad and what is a piece of content that is not an ad, okay? So content marketing is essentially, for example, let's say I have an Alzheimer's study, Okay, um, I'm creating content like YouTube videos. What is Alzheimer's? I'm interviewing doctors, not doctors affiliated with this study, just psychiatrists in general. I'm interviewing them about Alzheimer's. I'm interviewing them about what treatments are out there. I'm interviewing family members of people with Alzheimer's. I'm interviewing patients themselves. I'm providing commentary, just like I'm doing with this YouTube channel and with my Clinical Trials Guru blog. I'm doing a separate channel for many disease, uh, many therapeutic indications, many different diseases. Uh, we're just going very specific and we're not really having advertisings, right? We're having content marketing so that people who are interested in this topic come to the site and then, okay, once they come to the site, they get whatever they want. There is a place where they could sign up to be notified for clinical trials. So I bet you if you would ask an IRB, if you need to have the entire website IRB approved or each particular video or each particular piece of content IRB approved they're gonna say yes and that's in their best interest because they can bill for every single piece of content I think I don't think that would be appropriate I think maybe a generic uh, IRB approval for the site itself 
but if that company is not affiliated with any particular research site, then you have to ask the deeper philosophical question. So hopefully this helps out. This is an evolving topic as technologies change, as marketing strategies change. It's going to get very difficult to navigate these waters. And another quick thing I wanted to add, I keep amending this video because there's just more and more, and this is good. This means that it's a topic that we need to actually focus on more. So I've been audited by IRB. So when you get audited, let's say you have six studies, like my hypothetical situation, or not hypothetical situation, my real situation. We have six studies. Each study has a different IRB. Or let's say two studies share one IRB, two other studies share another one. If you get audited by an IRB, they're only allowed to audit the studies that they're the IRB for. Okay? The FDA is allowed to audit all your studies. Okay? Um, the FDA may or may not necessarily look into your advertisings. Right? But it's certainly, uh, if you have advertisements, especially generic ads in your regulatory binder, they're going to ask you about it. Where's the IRB approval? So obviously if you're running generic ads for your site that are not IRB approved, don't put them in the reg binder. Okay, but uh, you don't know which IRB is going to audit you. So let's say you're, uh, you have like Western IRB, right? And I'm just throwing names out there. Western IRB is auditing your site. They're not allowed to look at Copernicus or Shulman studies that you have at your site. Um, but you don't know that Western IRB came in, right? And maybe you got approval from for a generic ad for all studies from Shulman, okay? Now, will Western IRB approve and accept that as proper approval for an ad for their study or vice versa, right? This is, it gets complicated. It gets extremely complicated. So unless you get approval for all these six trials for every single IRB, and just redundant and you're, you're just throwing money away, which I'm not recommending anyone do, uh, it can get very complicated. Now obviously it's better if you have an IRB approved generic ad from any IRB as opposed to not having any ad approval, but that's a, that's a topic for another discussion. Um, and again, I don't think there's any right answer, okay? So wanted to throw that out there as well. Talk to you soon. Guru Nation, take care. Dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com. I'd be curious to hear all your feedback. Bye-bye.